my name is Tim Zuniga. And I'm Billy Haley. We pastor here at Goodlandsville Pentecostal Church, and this lesson here is about the youth pastor and pastor relationship. Billy, you and I have been uh, partnering in this wonderful thing called spiritual leadership for about 11 years. And uh, so we come to this session really with the uh, idea of a youth pastor and senior pastor relationship, the dynamic, the, the, the trust, and all of those things that make that work. And so I just want to set the table here for this conversation. We, we want to have an honest conversation with pastors and youth pastors. Um, we, we want to pull back the curtain because we know uh, this is so important. We also know this is the toughest time in church leadership, in spiritual leadership, and as much youth leadership. And so we, we have a couple things we just want to discuss. We want to have a conversation that we all learn from, we're going to lean into. And uh, I think what makes the relationship work, where really the track that the relationship rides on, is called trust. And so, uh, Billy, how, how do you gain trust? If that's the core, if that really is the foundation, how does a youth pastor gain trust with a senior pastor? That's a fantastic question. And, you know, it, I, think, I think that one of the biggest ways that a senior pastor can gain trust from their youth pastor is time invested. Now, youth ministry, if there's, if there's one thing I know about youth ministry, is it takes a lot of time. You invest a lot of time into young people uh, while you're a youth pastor. And so a lot of times, youth pastors spend so much time giving out, sure. but a lot of times, there's no time spent back investing into them. And so I, I believe that a youth pastor is craving time from their senior pastor. And that time may be mentoring, you know, spending time sitting across the table from each other, just talking about where they're going, what's going on in their life. And then not only uh, time, but it's also caring about what I do, that you do care about what I do, but you also care about who I am. Uh, more than just what I do, more than just what I can accomplish, more than just skill sets and what I bring to the table. Uh, you care about who, who I am as a person and not only who I am, but you care about who I'm becoming. Uh, but time is the way all of those things happen. Uh, intentional time spent with a youth pastor. I think for, for pastors, I think to, for the youth pastor to gain uh, trust of the pastor, I, I think a couple of things are key. Is one is communication. You know, I don't ever want a youth pastor to surprise me with a problem, an issue. I'll give you an example. Like, for instance, when a young person falls into sin, when there's a moral failure, when there's an issue, you don't ever want to get that news from, you know, the gossip chambers or your social media or Instagram. You, you, want, you want to have a private conversation and say, hey, pastor, I just want you to know what's going on. Let's solve this together because we're trying to protect a family. We're trying to protect a young person. We're trying to, in, we're in damage control, so to speak. So to me, communication is huge. Uh, I, I think we all would do better just communicating more pastors to youth pastor, youth pastor to pastor. Uh, I think the other thing that really how a pastor just builds trust with a youth pastor is just give them authority. Mm -hmm. like, let them make decisions. Be okay with not, hey, it's probably not the way I would do it, but man, it's a great way to do things. And, and yeah, your own creativity, your own gifted, your own you know, viewpoint of this is just giving them authority to have the final say. I, I hope I've never made you feel like a, Man, I had to sign off on every decision, right? Because no, so you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, thankfully, you never did. I think an example of that is, you know, you wouldn't say this, but you have a wealth of knowledge when it comes to youth ministry. I mean, you were a youth pastor sure. for how long? Uh, I mean, not as long as you, that's for sure. <laughs> but a long time. <laughs> a long time. You were years yeah. in youth ministry. Right, sure. and, you know, you're, you're known across the nation for you, you know, being a great youth evangelist and preaching. And so... You know, when I first came into youth ministry, that was a little intimidating, to be honest. Um, and, and I remember at times I would come to you uh, and I would maybe ask what you would do. And there were times where you would withhold because you trusted that you were trying to dig something out of me. You trusted that I would make the right decision. And so you gave me responsibilities, but you also gave me authority to make decisions. And, and you, know, you didn't question those. You never questioned them privately. You never questioned them publicly. You always trusted that, that I would make the right decision. Yeah, and again, that's so helpful. And I, again, we're all learning of this, but I, I do, we have to settle this issue that you're just going to make decisions I would make differently. Sure. Again, it doesn't make me right, you wrong, or you right, and me wrong. It's different. It's just different. And different is okay. Again, you have a different skill set. You have a different ability. 
And we just need to embrace the fact that we're just never going to sometimes make the same decision, and it's okay. Right. And, and that's how the kingdom of God gets better. I think the other thing, the way that a pastor gives, gives trust is there's public praise. You know, there, there's private discipline or, or private correction or private conversations. But, you know, publicly, you're, you're fanning their leadership. You're, you're praising them. You're, you're giving them, and, and you let them shine. And you're not intimidated. And there's another issue there as well, is that you can't be insecure yeah. as a senior pastor. And I'm just going to have, this is kind of something I want to lean into for a moment. Because I think sometimes we're okay with people that are around us, but if they're not as sharp or as shiny as us, we, we have to be, you know, the, the, the main event in every conversation. And sometimes you need to, well, no, you need to feel comfortable with other people that are quicker, smarter, better, and sharper than you. And it's okay. That doesn't mean your light dims or you're not, you're losing your competency. It's okay to have great, brilliant people around you, and they shine, and you're okay with that. In fact, you celebrate that. I think those are some of the best leaders. Insecure leaders are really dangerous leaders because they're always going to make decisions on how it affects them or how they, it makes them look. And uh, again, when you have youth pastors that are growing and they're discovering all that God's doing for them and their abilities, they're going to outpace you. They're going to outshine you in some areas. And that's the moment where pastors got to say, amen, go for it. So you talked about having your, your back, and right. that's where it's an important and, thing. And, and with that, you know, I, I think this generation of youth pastors, yes. God has gifted them with multiple talents. Oh, it's not just about preaching anymore. Right. You, know, you talked about sure. a one-trick pony. And I, I think one of the things, again, uh, that made us effective as a partnership here was you were never threatened if I, if I had other skill sets than you. Um, and, and I think what happens with pastors is if they, in an effort to protect their leadership, whether that's because so of insecurity, good. what they've done is, is they've limited the effectiveness of their youth pastor. Yeah. They have literally put a low ceiling on what God can do in their church because of their insecurity or not being able to trust or worried or threatened by a youth pastor who has multiple skill sets. So they view their gifts and their talents as just the, another avenue for God to do that. So when the, when the pastor releases them yeah. without worry of insecurity and threatened by that, it only advances the kingdom locally at their church. Yeah, and, and the kingdom of God wins. I, I want, I'm going to say this humbly because I, I, you need to know the dynamic. When, when I look at Billy, and, and again, th this guy can, can sing. He, he can play drums like nobody's business. He, he's, he's musically talented. He's computer savvy. He, he's good looking. He's got a beautiful family. He's got gorgeous kids, a gorgeous wife. I mean, the guy preaches. I, okay, okay. Th this is just real. Those that know Billy, and he's a humble guy. Keep going. No, keep right, going. yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he's, he's a package, right? I mean, humble. he's got, he's got the deal. And, and so, you know, I, you can be intimidated by it. Now, compare that with me. I mean, I can barely preach, okay? I, I, I have a passion for, for the things of God, but I can't sing, can't play. I barely can run my iPad. You can direct a choir. I, I can, back in the day, back in the day, okay? So, yeah, there, there are some skills, okay? Uh, but, but, again, and this is, not, this is not an anomaly, meaning this generation of leaders, there, there are multiple skills. They're like a Swiss Army knife. They got... Tons of ability. And for, for, for pastors to squelch that or to put a lid on it is, is damaging. I'm telling you, it is so damaging. And that's why I think this is an important part too, Billy. I think the way that we just begin to give trust is we invite them to the table, okay? When, when decisions are being made, we, we have, talk about that a little bit. Just what does it feel like? What does it look like to have a seat at the table? Yeah, you know, so I was like 25 years old whenever pastor asked my wife and I to lead student ministry. And um, the, way, the way we do leadership here is um, the youth pastor role is a part of our senior leadership team. So here I am, a 25-year-old with limited uh, leadership experience, wondering how in the world did I even get in this position. Uh, and yet here I am sitting around a table with seasoned leaders who'd been you know, 20, 30 years in leadership, people who had pastored, people who had led at a high level and wondering why in the world or how in the world did I get here? But what it did is it made me appreciate the opportunity. It made me appreciate that you would allow my wife and I to sit at a table that at that time, we didn't have a lot to offer. You know, we were, we were 
uh, at the, the low end of the totem pole, if you will. We were still learning a lot. But through that experience, man, I learned to trust you so much more. It gained confidence in you. I saw that you were for me. Having a seat at the table at your local church as a youth pastor is so vital because it, it, it shows the youth pastor that you bring more to the table than just youth ministry. That youth ministry is not some isolated ministry over here, or it's not a glorified babysitting club. That we want youth ministry to connect to something that's bigger than just one ministry. It connects to the entire vision of the church and and valuing their leadership and influence on a larger scale in the local church. Let's talk about this aspect of what he wrote to leadership, because... You know, we've really put in some effort about what, what, how do you give, how do you build it, but what, what, what is it, what does it look like to erode leadership? So let me start off, and then you, you can yeah, go. Is that I think that the lack of follow through. I mean, you know, when you are tasked with something, when you know it's on the calendar, when you're trying to create energy, we talked about bringing your own energy, and again, you're always trying to babysit the youth pastor. Come on, is that event going? You know, where's the promotion on that? Does parents know? Are you communicating? You know, do you have leaders? Is it, you know, you have a right chaperone when you feel like you can't really just fully give the responsibility because they're just a lack of follow. I think that just is a, a killer. Talk about that a little bit. Everybody in youth ministry talks about the proverbial stepping stone right, or something sure. else. I'm telling you, that that is the quickest way to erode trust in students, but it's also the quickest way to erode trust in your senior pastor. If you're looking, if you've been entrusted with the great calling and responsibility of youth ministry, but all you can see is what's next, then you are eroding trust across the board in parents and students and, and your pastor. So, yeah, I think, I think uh, making sure that you are competent, making sure that you are focused on what you're called to do, and you're, you're doing a great job. A couple other things that come to mind is character issues. Uh, again, in this, in this time, and I just encourage all of us, pastors, youth pastors, that double our efforts on working on our character. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter how gifted you are or talented you are. It, man, if it just takes one instant and one moment, and, and, uh, and all of a sudden, this ministry that God's entrusted you is now gone. Uh, you have stories. I have stories. I know people. You know people. Again, that just has forfeited the right to lead because of a character issue. And believe you me, I mean, uh, th- there is always going to be an attempt to take out leaders. That's that's sure. the enemy's goal, man, just to take out leaders. So for for youth pastors and pastors, just just working on our character. We're never graduated from working on our character. We got to continue asking God to make us people of character. And then I think the other thing is that I just really what erodes trust from a youth pastor is this idea that youth ministry is the main thing. Uh, Being a non-team player, okay? And again, you were never that. And I'm so grateful for that. We always looked at it like we're a system, like your body. Your body is a system. All of them work in concert. All of them work complementing one another. But when you're a non-team player, when you feel like, you know, your your events are the most important events, you only put energy when it's your event. You're only, you know, advertising when it's your event. You know, you're only concerned about your event. Man, that causes a lot of issues. So, Billy... Yeah, anyway. I, th- I think one of the things, I'll never forget, one of the things you asked me um, was, what do you do and what else do you do? <laughs> uh, it's never just, it was never one thing, and especially whether you're a volunteer or whether you're full, you know, full-time at your church. It's never just one thing. I, a lot of youth pastors that I know, they wear multiple hats now. Uh, and so I think that the quickest way to erode trust is whenever you are so locked in on student ministry whether that's casting your own vision, whether that's ice, being, being, in, uh, being in isolation uh, away from all other ministries, thinking that, that you're not connected somehow. It's, it's only a matter of time before trust is eroded, not only in the senior pastor, but in other leaders. And that's where synergy is lost. That's where trust is breached. And so you got to look at your talents, what God has blessed you with, as bigger than just youth ministry. And because at the end of the day, and this is what I always told you, is that my heart is for the local church. Now, the, the, the lane that I ran in for 11 years was student ministry, but never siloed off from what the vision of the local church from you and God was. I tried to connect all of that and say, okay, I can't say I'm for the local church, 
and disconnect from everything else that, that God is doing at this campus. I have to find a way to connect to and see what are ways that I can help or make it better. We're going to spend these just last few moments here as we wrap up the session about just talking directly to you. Billy, you're going to talk directly to the youth pastors, what you want to share with them. I'll end it by talking directly to, to the pastors. So why don't you just give some closing remarks to talking right to the youth pastors? Yeah, so again, in 11 years in youth ministry, uh, I, get, I get the struggle. Now, to be honest, the struggle right now, we've never experienced what youth pastors are experiencing right now. And my heart goes out to you. We transitioned in January and had a new youth pastor and his wife came in and, and it, it's like the rug was jerked out from under them immediately. Yeah, and so fire. If, if you're in youth ministry right now, man, my heart goes out to you and, and we're, pray, we're praying for you. Um, but if, if you've watched these, these last several minutes and, and you're thinking, man, I, what do I do from here? You know, wh- where, do, where do I go from here? Um, my, my challenge to you is don't be afraid to sit down and have a conversation with your pastor. Um, and, and, and it, it may be awkward depending on the relationship that you have with them right now. It may be uncomfortable, but I can promise you it will be worth it. Pastor, you and I have sat down. We've had so many conversations along the way. Some of them were just hanging out conversations, strengthening the relationship. Some of them were, I, I would warn you, I would knock on your door and I would say, I'm about to vomit on your floor and I need you to pastor me. I know that's a little crude, but I, I, need, I, need, I need you to pastor me right now. But you, you'll never regret. And maybe there's some things here that you think these are areas that I need to work on as a youth pastor. Take some time, you, if you're married, you and your spouse, sit down, write those things down. And then don't be afraid to call that meeting and have that conversation and bring those. Here's, here's what, when you sit down with your pastor, here are the things that, that I feel like I need to bring to the table. The worst thing you could do is to come in accusational. I, I always say the best thing you could possibly do is go stand in front of a mirror, look deep into your own eyes and say, how can I improve this relationship? How, what are the things that I can tweak and adjust to make this relationship better, to build the trust back up. But at the end of the day, I would just challenge every youth pastor, have the conversation. Don't shy away from the tough conversation. It's going to be worth it. If it strengthens the relationship, it'll be worth it. Yeah, and to every youth pastor, just a huge thank you. Thank you for doing such a noble work. Your, Your ministry will change the world and change generations don't ever underestimate your influence and what God's doing through you and through your youth group. And so, I mean, I concur and say, Billy, thank you. To pastors, let me just close with this. Um, one of the greatest treasures God gives, gives you and me is, is people that partner with your ministry, partner with your vision, and, and, and work this thing together. It's no fun doing it by yourself. It's hard work when you have to do it all by yourself. When God privileges you with people, and especially gifted people, um, this is where you have to understand you're a steward. I'm not just a steward of their time. I'm a steward of their ministry. Um, Whatever God, whatever little part I will play in Billy Haley's ministry, uh, it would be hubris for me to think that, uh, you know, I I can do everything for Billy. Uh, I'm just charged with emptying my cup into Billy. And God is going to ultimately do his will in Billy's life. But what I call, I would like to win the heart, meaning I, I want to know what God's doing in his life. I want to know his dreams. I want to know some of the fun things he wants to do. I want to know about his kids. I want to know how his marriage is doing. I want to know the things that are painful, things that he would long to do, the, the, his bucket list, if you will. Uh, this is called winning the heart. It's not what I can get from him. It's not what he gives to this church. It's not what he just does for a job, but it's it's really it's a, it's a two-way relationship. It's, it's us working this thing together and saying, you know what? I care about you as a person. I care about you as a friend. I care about you as a husband. I care about you as a father. I care about you as a Christian. I care about you as an individual. That's called winning the heart. And, and every one of us desires that. There's, there's no you desire. I desire that. People that care about you just want to make sure you're good. And so for pastors, I, I would employ you. Uh, that conversation that Billy just described with, with the youth pastor, you should initiate that. You, you, sh- you should set that appointment. That's high priority and say, why don't we go grab a cup of coffee? Why don't we go to lunch? And, and let's just talk. Let the conversation just be honest and 
start something fresh, you would be totally blessed by what that produces and how much that would mean. I know it meant a lot to me when my pastor would do that for me. Uh, Billy's just described how much it's meant to him because we're human. And um, I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that this has challenged you. But it would be a tragedy for you to hear this and not do anything with it. So the challenge is take that first step, build that relationship, have that conversation, and just see what God will do through you and the youth pastor of your church of where you guys are called to lead. Thank you for joining us. I pray that it's blessed you in ministry. Billy, anything? No, uh, you guys are heroes. If you're a youth pastor, keep going. We got your back. We're praying for you. You can do this. Yeah.